And what's going on? Fontaine here, VIP SoundLab.com, and we're back on Machine 2.6.5. A very important update and very brilliant on the part of Native Instruments. And for all you Native Instruments machine lovers, I think you guys are going to really love the ideas view. Because when I first seen it, I thought it was more or less geared towards the uh, machine jam. But you will find out that it's very useful when it comes to, you know, spread across the board for all your controllers. You know, again, I do apologize for the delay because we were, you know, out of the country, you know, pursuing some new sound design ventures and things of that nature. But anyway, okay, so to make this really easy, and I know when you first see it, you could be a little overwhelmed. We're going to move the view like this so you can understand a lot better. It's a lot easier than you think. I was getting like a lot of emails on this, and I was like, man, I can't wait to get back in the country so I can make the videos on this. You know, because we were making the videos, and we had a problem with... Uh, the hard drive for our camera and we lost like four videos and i was like oh my god i was like i can't believe i gotta sit here and do all this again really <laughs> but anyway um yeah so you notice that where the mixer was here okay it's now here okay this is your mixer view you know you press shift and uh navigate on the controller and you can switch between you know your mixer view you know and the regular view this right here is where all your routings and you know all that good stuff will be stored here but, you know, we'll, we'll get into that in another video. All right. So how it works is basically this is your arrangement view. OK, your sections, you can add sections here and we'll get into that in a second. But OK, the looper still works the same. Don't worry about that. You know, this is when you want to loop, you know, your ideas or your scenes, whatever you want to call them. But this this guy right here, when you click this icon, just when you can switch between your arrangement view. OK, and your section view here. OK, so the idea view is basically it plays freely from the timeline, you know, so it can make it really easy or intuitive. If you want to get your ideas out, you know, see how, you know, if you want to test out some patterns, test out some intros, test out some breakdowns before actually, you know, actually committing it to your arrangement. All right. So I labeled this one intro. I labeled this one verse and here goes a little blank idea that was, uh, coming to coming to play. I don't know. We might label this like chorus or something like that. Let me label, this is chorus just to give you an idea and you'll see how this is going to jazz really easy in your head. Okay. Like here's your intro. For example, you notice how when you follow this bracket, okay, like this, you can access any group. Okay. Inside your idea views. You know, if I had uh, a group, let's say like C here by clicking this little plus icon. And then let's say right here, I had a group uh, D. Okay. This little bracket, enables you to access anywhere inside this idea view. You know, if there was like little patterns over here, you know, just for example, I'll just, I'll just put some like little dummy patterns in here, even though there's nothing on them, just so you get an idea. I'll put maybe like three patterns here just to match that. So if there were patterns in here, you know, you can access these patterns. Okay. So again, you don't arrange the patterns, you know, from top to bottom or from bottom to top. No, it's not like that. It, it's basically, these are your groups here. These little icons down here. This is group A. This is group B. This is group C. Okay, this is group D. Accessing different sounds. You notice how in group B, I'm accessing the drum sample sounds here. From on group A, I'm accessing this sample chop here. You understand? So when the highlights up here, you're, giving, you're getting access down here. Okay? So let's say if I was on pattern two here, here's a different pattern. This pattern is a four bar pattern. Okay, but this pattern right here is only a two bar pattern. OK, so if I was, you know, auditioning this idea and I'm on pattern one here with pattern one here for my drums. OK, of course, nothing's going to play in these two because there's nothing on there. And then I hit the play button. What happens is it's going to audition the idea. OK, that's one idea. That perhaps can be, you know, a part of the song, maybe the verse or the chorus, you know, however you want to label it, that's completely up to you. But let's say I was on, let's say group A, and I was like, I want to break down the sample. As I've done here, I made a little example. You know, I'm taking a sample and I'm just playing here and then a second bar is breaking down and it's breaking down. So, you know, you might want your drums to follow. So maybe we'll put maybe, I'll put maybe pattern two just for the heck of it just so it can break down. So now what happens is you get in the drums from group B in your idea and group uh, A over here is getting the second uh, pattern here for it's breaking down more. Again, this was the original, 
This is the new one. All right, if that makes sense. So now what happens is when I audition this idea, you see what I mean? So I'm like, well, that could be a little part in the song. So maybe we'll go over here. We'll say maybe it'll sound a little bit better if I had a, a pattern. Let me get like an extra snare in here, you know, to kind of boom, crack it in a little bit better. You know what I mean? So we'll go ahead and add that joint in there like that. So let's let's try this idea right here. That's a nice idea. So now I'm building basically the song. I'm getting ideas in. So, you know, you can also do this on the fly from the controller, but I don't want to go too far in these videos. Cause I'm going to do these videos one at a time just to make it a little more easier to understand. I don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of different ideas at one time. So we're going to cover just the basics in this video. So what happens is, um, what's a good way to explain this? I guess what you do here follows over here inside your, uh, your section view here. Okay. Again, here's your looper here. Okay. So, for example, let's say here here's the first here's the first idea I was doing right here. You can see the patterns right here. Okay, here's group A, group B, C, and D. All right. So let's say over here on the intro, I want a pattern one with let's say these drums like this. Okay, that's the intro. Okay. You see intro has pattern one. Okay, and pattern one. Group C and D. I'll just take these off because I don't want to confuse nobody. Let me just take these these ones off so I don't confuse anyone. I'll just make an example over there. But see, here's the chorus. Okay. Intro. Okay. Here's the chorus. On the chorus, I selected uh, pattern two and pattern three here. Okay. That's why on this on this here, you see two and three. So if I go back here and let's say I want a uh, pattern one here, maybe pattern two under the chorus. Again, this is the idea. Okay. You see it says pattern one and pattern two in the chorus. So it's basically uh, it's corresponding. So you you know you don't get confused by that. Okay. So here's one, here's the pattern one, here's the pattern two. So when it plays that part of the chorus, that's exactly what you're going to hear what's in those patterns. Let's say if I went to the intro and I want a pattern two to start, you know, for some crazy reason, I don't know, I started with pattern two and pattern three like this here. Okay. What happens is on this group right here, it was going to perfectly emulate what I have there. So you press intro. Okay. Pattern two, pattern three. Okay, pattern two, pattern three. You see what I'm saying? So whatever you do here is what's going to follow on this screen here. And I hope that makes it really, really easy. I think it's very intuitive, very brilliant, actually, on Native Measurements part. Um, until you get comfortable with understanding that, this is going to make it really easy. Just think of this, these like um, little idea views. It's just like little sections. I guess that might be a good way to, to say it like that. Because your idea views... Wherever this bracket goes, it's going to hold, you know, maybe like a container. It's going to hold, you know, all your ideas and your patterns in here. You don't have to go down here and use this, um, this little guy down here. I mean, you can, but you just don't have to. I mean, if I did it here, it's, it, it's still going to follow. But, you know, you're going to be like, why even go down here? In future updates, I would imagine they probably would just take this button off. Um maybe i don't know i really don't see the reason to keep it here anymore but you know someone might find it useful so I, maybe they'll leave it i don't know but i think this way is easier you know and you plus you can select your scenes and patterns you know with, with your pad you know it's it's gonna work the same as it did in the original um updates before the 2.5.6 i mean 2.6.5 so i hope that makes it easy to understand and that's how you can go ahead and get your patterns you know, in your scenes on the fly. And, you know, also keep in mind, whatever you do when you're changing a pattern here, it's going to follow whenever you have a pattern one or a pattern two or pattern three. It's going to change all those patterns on the fly. But you guys are familiar with that as well because that was in, you know, some of the original updates. So I hope that makes it really easy to understand. And again, the mix icon that was here is now here. Again, it can be controlled with shift navigate. And again, one thing I think I should mention also before I do get out of here. Okay. Here's your group A, here's your group B. You notice how when I hover the mouse over this, these little letters highlight. You can also solo. Like if I'm playing a track here, if I right click that, you 
see what I mean? You could solo by right clicking or let's say I want to solo just the drums. You know, so the possibilities are endless. And then you have your your uh, your range of view here. You know, if you want to add a little blank section here, you know, you can right click, you know, you can select different scenes. For example, let's say if I want to do another intro here, I can drop the intro in like this. OK, and then let's say if I want to go over here, I can right click. I can append. You know, maybe I want to change something or something like that. Maybe I said not like the way that the chorus was. You know, we can add, we can add the chorus, we can add the chorus right there, or I can add a little blanks, a little blank section here. And when I loop this, maybe this was something where I wanted to specifically have maybe like a blank um, part right here. You know, maybe I want like a little drop, you know, something special going on in there. I could turn this off. Maybe have like a little silent part right there. Okay, and when you zoom in, you actually can see your bars and beats a lot better like that. Like, this is your first bar, you know, first bar, second beat, third beat, fourth beat, second bar, second bar, third beat, fourth beat. You know, these are useful little tools, so you definitely want to, you know, use those. That'll help you time that better. You know, you might just want to have a little, you know, maybe like a little blank. My mouse will get on there. A little blank part, maybe like right there. Boom. And then over here. Maybe add like a little intro like that. You know, your 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 MC might be saying something real dope right there. You know, so that's basically how it works. You know, it's basically, you know, and then you have your looper icon here when you want to loop, you know, your whole masterpiece. So it's, it pretty much works the same. In in other words, in, in my opinion, it's pretty much exactly the same thing. The only thing different is you have this little you know, a little idea view where you can go ahead and, uh, you know, build some ideas, some patterns, you know, and get things going. All right. So moving right along, I think we covered that part pretty well. And we broke that down very, very uh, simple, I'd imagine. You know, when it comes to your, um, your routings and things of that nature, we now have the plus routing and the plus pattern icons right here, where now when you're switching between your kits, okay. All your routings that you have set up will stay um, routed. You know, I don't have anything set up on this particular um, instance, but, you know, if I had some MIDI channels set up, you know, going through different channels like channels one, two, three, four, five, and maybe I had it set up to maybe like my host TW, you know, or something, you know, to that effect, it would have a host uh, name here. Matter of fact, you can go to www.vipsoundlab.com and you can get our machine or rather our Machina 2.6.5 uh, routing templates that we have for uh, Ableton Live 9.7, which will uh, basically be using Machina as a sound module where all the tracks will be a multi-track recording um, tracked out inside Ableton Live where you can actually arm the tracks and um, get your work done that way too. You might want to check a previous video on that. We just released that video, I think it was about a week back. You know, so you might want to take a look at that and see how that template works. Again, if you're a member of the site, just go into the member section. You can download that template right away. Uh, I think I had a request for a Personas Studio 3 uh, template. I have that done. I just have to upload that on the site. I'm going to hit you with that, man. I know you've been hitting me about that. Um, I'm also going to do a Pro Tools one. We'll, we'll get the Pro Tools one out there, too. And also, while I have the camera up and running, for the screen capture. Also, you have the ability to do your uh, MIDI scene changes here under MIDI change. Now, if you guys remember this in the old video, on the old video that we did with Ableton Live, we showed you how you can change uh, your scenes using the MIDI notes inside Ableton Live. That's a video you might want to take a look at too. But you know, if you guys want me to do an updated video on that, just let me know. Because basically, what happens is the MIDI notes will trigger from, um, like, let's say if I was like, Ableton Live right now, and let's say this was like C2, you start from C2. And then every corresponding MIDI note as you go up will trigger the uh, following scene. <clears throat> so it'd be like, okay, let's say this was C2. This will trigger scene one. This will trigger scene two, scene three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. You know what? I'll just I'll just make another video. The next video, we'll we'll cover that. You know, along with some uh, some other things, we'll we'll do that also. Because basically, 
the only thing that's really changed, okay, like when you're doing by notes, okay, you, you can do MIDI notes or program change. So MIDI notes would be basically what I'm doing here. Program change would be something a little bit different, but we have an old video on that, uh, covering that. But, you know, we might do some updated videos on that. And, you know, here's your channels here. Okay, section, that's going to basically work, you know, basically the same. So you got your scenes and your sections. All right, so lock, we'll get into, we'll get into lock, you know, another time, but that's pretty much how that works. So, um, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. This is your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.